the full uh, upgrade, as we like to call it, in other words, moving to this new MLS system, we want to make sure that anyone that is not sure what they need to do or, or might need a little instruction on how to do it, like copying the saved searches, like how to download your associated docs, how to, how beginning Monday, how to upload them into, uh, into the new Paragon. Those are things that you, you really need to know how to do. So um, one thing I want to assure you is um, uh, you will have those bo both of those Paragons available. Um, at some point, which I'll discuss shortly, that current Paragon that you're using is, is going away. Um, it could be there for reference if you have saved searches, but all new updates, entry, all of that will be, beginning next week, will be exclusively in the new MLS system. So any new listings, any updates, all of that will be uh, beginning Monday in the new system. So there is no looking back. But if you do need to access something, coming to the picture a little late, you got some safe searches or some information that you thought, you know what, I know it was in the other system, you'll still have access to that just under the stipulation that that data is dated or static as, as we would call it in databases. No updates or anything like that, but you'll be able to reference it. So, um, okay, is everyone able to, that has a laptop able, do they have internet access? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, if you got questions later, I will definitely answer them, so it, it's okay. We just want to keep things moving here. So um, let's just kind of fly through this. Um, I apologize for those that have already seen this, maybe the video, but I'm just going to kind of fly through what the overview of the conversion is, um, what this relationship means now that you're coming on board with us, what those benefits are, and there's quite a few benefits. You've already seen some of them with uh, BSNA, um, Realist, uh, but you're going to see a lot more with uh, like Cloud CMA, market stats, plus a bunch of other products that we'll be introducing that you don't have uh, currently today. And then we'll discuss those important dates. Um, and I don't know, how many of you have been, if you log into the current Paragon, you'll see I've got several notices in there reminding you to do this, that. Um, I had said I would politely annoy you, and I'll continue to do that uh, up until when that old Paragon is completely gone. Um, you'll see notices in the new system about what you should be aware of. And of course, if there are any doubts um, after you leave here, um, you're welcome to call support and ask questions at any time. So I just want to remind you of that. And we put the support phone number on there anywhere. Obviously, you can call, you can call Jason as well. But, um, but all right. And they have support seven days a week, right? Yeah, seven days a week, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So any questions, any concerns, um, you can either do that or you can send it to the email support at myrealsource.com as well. And did you introduce yourself or did you just start? Oh, did I just start going? <laughs> you know what? I apologize. Okay. Yeah, before we go any further, uh, I'm Brian Alford, um, the uh, chief technologist with My Real Source, and this is Colleen DeLang. She is one of our agent instructors. So um, she knows the agent talk. She is an active agent. This is what we've discovered is really our best instructors are active. They understand the workflow. They know everything about um, what agents do day to day. So uh, that is something that definitely helps um, in the instruction or instructional part of uh, uh, our classes. He so. speaks the tech part. I sort of translate into agent speak. <laughs> we yeah, work good that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, she might have to chime in. And I, I try to, you know, I, I, I have to consider, um, you know, what I have to deal with. And, and then what you have to deal with is sometimes a little different. So it's, um, I it think our, good our goal is still the same. <laughs> is to make it work. <clears throat> so, um, all right, let's, uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, you may have seen this, change your head, just reminding you. Again, one of my, uh, um, you know, annoying or politely annoying <laughs> notices reminding you, hey, guess what we're going to be doing? We're going to be changing MLS systems. I understand you've been through this before. You went from Rapid Tony to Paragon. Now you're going to go from Paragon to Paragon. So 
let's just say the learning curve is not so bad, but there are changes. So, all right. Okay, um, just a reminder of what we are. We've been doing this for, um, for over 10 years, uh, vendoring uh, uh, associations and boards. And what we're able to do is, is provide a place for you within what we call a regional MLS. So you have your place within the system. There's other MLSs that are in there, or sorry, associations and boards that are in there. But you have full autonomy. You, have your own, you can have your own rules, uh, branding, fields, communication. All of that stuff remains, just like it does today, in your Paragon. So not a lot of change from what you're going to see. You'll still see notices from Jason or Kim about uh, any system changes or anything like that. So that communication is still going to be there. That home page is still going to look familiar. So for the most part, initially it's going to look identical to what you have. So um, that's definitely... Okay. Um, just the general product line. Uh, Paragon 5, which is what we're all currently using. Showing time. Um, I'll be addressing a little bit more about showing time, um, how that's going to change on February 25th, on that Monday. Uh, HomeSnap Pro Premium, this is another one of the products that you're going to be getting. And the premium piece is, that allows you to do uh, listing maintenance. In other words, you can change the price, the status, uh, remarks, right on your phone, uh, right within HomeSnap. So, very cool option. It also will now give you associated docs, like your seller's yep. disclosures yep. and lead-based paint. I was showing houses this weekend, and they said, hey, how old is the roof? Well, before, we'd have to go back to the office and pull up those disclosures. Now you can actually see them right on your phone when you're walking into the house. So, yeah, and, and the, the, one, the one reason that you have to upload your documents into Paragon is so that we do get that capability. You're able to share those documents in a lot, a lot more places than you currently do with them in Instanet. So... Yes, it's a little pain, but it's a, it's a, it's, it's a greater gain in the end. Uh, cloud CMA, I mentioned that before. Uh, very nice uh, Cloud CMA generator. Again, these are things that are coming in March. Uh, Instant Forms, you already have that. That's something I'll address, just like showing time. What's going to uh, happen on Monday, February 25th, is we're going to, all of your associated docs, your transactions, everything is going to be right where you left it. It's just on um, that Monday, you'll be able to access the same transactions from within the new MLS system. So I'm assuring you, you will not lose anything. So Instanet is on schedule with converting everything over. So this is not a big deal. We've actually done this before. So, um, so I just want to assure everyone that um, all of those documents, transactions, everything will be right where you left them, just in the new system. And they'll have some new enhancements in the new system. Oh yeah, you'll have some new enhancements that we might breeze over, um, which includes listing entry from um, Instanet or Transaction Desk. So you could fill out a data sheet, and we'll just breeze over that really quick. You can then you could uh, push that into the MLS system. You don't currently have that today, but you will have that in the new MLS system. And then there's another product, and I'll go over this if we have time later. It's uh, Par Paragon for Brokers, which is, uh, it allows just a different level of communication between the, uh, the broker and the agents. Okay, zip form, you guys don't use that up here. Uh, BSNA, you definitely like that. Um, so that was something we were able to um, integrate within your current system. You'll have that exactly the same way on the agent reports that deep linking will be available just like it is today in your current MLS system. And they still get all of Genesee County for free, correct? Correct, correct. So, which yep. Are we going to get other counties with that or just uh, at this point? At this point, it's just Genesee County. That is what your leadership has decided is Genesee. So, um, and it's so nice you don't have Genesee. to constantly pay those $2 yep. fees because as an agent, it all adds up at the end yep. of the year, all those $2. So is everybody using them? Is everybody testing it out and liking it? Good. Okay, um, realist, uh, we've added uh, additional counties to the counties that you currently had. I think you had seven counties, now we have 20 in addition to the seven that you already have. 
So you'll see that. Actually, you see that today. Um, single property website. This is something you'll be getting, um, which allows you to promote this, uh, a listing. And what that is, is if you enter a listing, this site offers you a way to promote it, market it, and do whatever you want with it. And it's dedicated to that property. But it doesn't just stop there. It actually uh, it allows you to promote yourself in addition to that. So at the top, and we'll have some quick slides about that, it'll show you what um, um, everything about the property and then any of your additional listings. So it'll have information about primarily the property, the agent, and then the agent's other listings. And then you can link off of those as well. Uh, list track is um, a product that allows you to track those. So in other words, how's that property doing on the internet? How's it doing on Zillow? How's it doing on Realtor.com? How's it do on IDX? How's it do on the single property website? How does it do on HomeSnap? How does it... So that performance across the internet, you can actually generate a client report and show them, hey, we've gotten all kinds of views. You can see the activity. You can see where it's being uh, viewed uh, in a nice client report. So very cool. Um, RPR deep linking, um, and we created our own uh, custom uh, calculators that auto pop based on the MLS data. So just like any other deep linking or a quick action, like you click on it and it populates the price, the HOA, uh, taxes, all of that information is, is thrown into a calculator and you can generate all kinds of uh, uh, amateurization reports and, and so on. All right, uh, some of the uh, system improvements that you'll see. Uh, cross MLS sell side listings. In other words, you're, you will have the capability of correctly reporting an agent as a sell side agent that is in another MLS. So if they're from RealCop or they're from my real source or they're from Saginaw, you will be able to accurately report that. And at the same time, you will have your information accurately reported from other MLSs. So what this means is if you go in and you do a production report, you have an accurate report of production. You don't see non-member. You don't see anything like that. So that's a very big, big improvement. Um, associated documents, I had mentioned about that. Uh, the one difference is, is in addition to uh, uh, some of the features that we have in uh, Transaction Desk by pushing a listing, uh, on the purchase side, uh, we have the capability of actually um, sending the associated documents at, at the start of a purchase side transaction. So what that means is you click on an easy button, and it automatically sends those transaction or those uh, associated docs into that transaction. So you don't have to download them and then upload them; they're automatically there at the start of that transaction. Okay, tax autofill. Um, you had that, and that was something that, on the introduction of the new realist that we brought it, we unfortunately had to disable it. Uh, but you will have that back in this new one with those additional counties. So 20 counties instead of seven. Uh, BSA, the deep linking, as I mentioned before, that will be exactly as it is today. Um, HomeSnap and the single property website, those are integrated. So all of these products, they're all integrated within Paragon. That's a common theme that we have. So you're able to link to either a HomeSnap report on a property or a single property website on a report. Um, all the, and and uh, another thing uh, that is uh, noticeably different is all of our Paragon reports are multi-class. What that means is if I click on one type of report, it works across multiple classes. It works for residential, vacant land, commercial, multifamily, just one report. So if you find your favorite report, that's it. You don't have to switch between a report for vacant land or a report for residential. It's not uncommon for agents to search for both residential and vacant land for um, a buyer because they're considering either or is the option. You don't have to toggle reports. You can all of our reports are multi-class, so that just makes it that much easier just to toggle through next, next, next. One thing when I was teaching classes out here, a lot of people expressed they would like a report, want a one-page report that had everything on it. 
you'll see some new reports. And one of those is kind of what everybody was asking for, where an agent will have everything on one page, nice and easy to see, easily identified. Um, so you'll see some new great reports, I think, that will be very helpful. Yep. And uh, last but not least, uh, listing deduplication. Um, Currently, I think what you have is a manual process that, or a reactive process that you try to uh, remove the duplicates. We have it automated. And the difference being that as the agent, and mostly as the client, you don't see the duplicates. Uh, they're caught before they're actually sent out with morning reports, prospecting, uh, agent CMAs or agent uh, searches. So that information is captured immediately so you don't see those duplicates. What that means is, again, your clients don't see duplicates and the statistics reflect what would be accurate statistical information as well. Each thing broken down. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about all of this. Uh, it's been, oh, what, two weeks? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, just this is what we mean by uh, cross MLS cell cell. You know, th this is not an acceptable means of identifying who the agent is. Um, it does not help uh, the selling agent in any way when they should be getting credit for this for it to be uh, a non-resident or, or non-member uh, non agent. So that, while it is still available in there, it, you can actually, you should be able to see all approximately... 22 to 25,000 agents that are in the GLR. So, and as any other uh, data sharing is introduced, those will be available as well. So, yeah, that's a thing of the past. So, okay, associated documents. Again, this looks like a familiar quick action link that you currently have today. The difference being, it automatically pulls those disclosure documents into the start of the transaction. I know agents count clicks, so. Well, it's nice. If you want to send everything out with your purchase agreement, they're automatically there. So you can send everything out for e-signatures. much easier than them. Go find them, upload them, and go through that whole process. Yep, yep. Okay, the listing upload from uh, the listing data sheet. So this right here is the header of the, the new data sheet that you'll be using for beginning February 25th. That's Monday, less than a week away. And what this enables you to do is to fill out that data sheet in there and you can actually hit upload listing. And what it does is it throws it into the MLS system as a partial. And then what that does is that enables you to actually add the photos, any associated docs, stage the property of the property or the listing the way it's supposed to, and then hit save and then it goes out to the world. I don't think you should have a listing active until there's a picture on it. Absolutely. I totally agree. Absolutely. Is there a way to delete partials that never should have even gotten here? Yeah, you should be able to delete the, the partials in there. Uh, there should not be a checkbox yeah, in the new program. Yeah, a check not box yet. And a delete. Yeah, just currently, just, uh, just a reminder, right now you cannot add edit listings in the new system yet. That won't be available until Monday. So what you see there is... I, all I encourage you to do, and I will harp on this one, um, if you see an issue, especially with the data, please report it. Just hit that corrections button. You're looking at a listing, your listing, and you see something missing. Hit that corrections button and say, hey, you know what, this is missing, this is missing. And, you know, we're trying to get everything that we can uh, by Monday or even by the weekend. That's what we're doing. We're going to be working over the weekend to get this done. So that's how dedicated we are to, to making sure that this uh, change, or and I know some people hate the word conversion, but that's what it is, and we're changing over to the system that it, everything goes the way it's supposed to. But if we miss something, that's fine. We could still access your previous system and pull that data. So I tried to pull over so she could kind of see how she would do that. It's extended. It doesn't show my other screen, so I guess I'll have to show you after. Maybe you can drag it over. But, you know what, let's just fly through it and then we'll, okay. we'll kind of hit on those. Because this is kind of the, uh, 
a, a quick version of the, the previous event, and since a lot of you didn't see that, I, I just want to make sure that it's clear what, what you're getting in the new system and what the changes are. Okay. Um, here are the new counties. So you have these today, and you'll have these beginning Monday as well. And obviously, you know, you can log into the new system at any time uh, today or over the weekend or whatever. It's just you won't be able to add listings or edit listings until Monday. Okay, uh, Realist Autofill. We have uh, a Realist Autofill within Transaction Desk. So you can either pick the MLS system or Realist. And of Realist, you have those 20 counties that you can actually autofill. So um, a lot of agents, they just do exclusively, they upload their listings from the listing data sheet. Mm -hmm. um, some even say it's easier. <laughs> but you know, you can actually fill out part of the listing data sheet too, right from the tax record. So literally, you can put the address in, it goes out, finds the, the tax information of that property, and allows you to fill a lot of that stuff out, like the lengthy legal description, uh, the address, the school district, a lot of that will come over for you. So it's a lot less you have to fill out. Yep. Okay, uh, this is the BSNA, deep linking. This is Colleen's favorite icon. Trash can. It looks like a trash can, doesn't it? Yes, See, it she said it first. Uh -huh. It's yeah. supposed to be a government pillar. It's supposed to be elongated <laughs> like a government pillar, but I swear it looks like you should delete a listing that way. It, it, it looks like a trash can, but Brian promises he's going to fix that. I, at, at some point. <laughs> It's not at the top of the list. Nice. But it's, Put a it's, smiley face. That would probably we could do that. something. I mean, Have we don't, a nice it, day. It kind of <laughs> looks like you should delete the listing from there. Yep. So uh, I can tell you just by the activity that this is hugely successful uh, based on your membership. So I can actually see that activity, uh, how many records are being uh, uh, requested. So um, I, I'm glad to see that. I'm glad to see that it's... It's definitely a huge benefit for your members. All right, uh, single property website, HomeSnap reports. Again, these are just reviews of these links. This is what the, uh, the single property website looks like. It's mobile friendly, so it's, it's intelligent. It knows what device it's on, and it'll scale down to mobile devices or scale up to desktop. Completely intelligent, and it allows you to post on any social media platform. So it just allows you to, just another way to market your, your property. And again, all of this is tracked on uh, through, next slide. And marketing here is a lot better because it's only highlighting you and your other listings. A lot of agents who like share from Zillow, when you click on that link, it's showing you other agents, other companies. It's like handing your lead over to someone else. When you use the single property website, the only thing they see is your information and your other listings. So again, you want to make sure you're uh, sharing your listing in a way that it's returning that lead to you. Okay, you can flip. This is animated. Uh, this is just a reminder. All of the, uh, the reports are multi-class. So it allows you to just do really, if you'd like to run hot sheets or you like to do anything like that, you, you use the market monitor. It, it definitely is a, is a time saver. You don't have to toggle between multiple reports. You find your favorite report. I mean, honestly, as an agent, uh, you probably have maybe three or four reports that you really use. And, you know, half of those are client reports. So as an agent report, you're probably looking at one or two. And then maybe one or two client reports, and that's it. That's all you should be dealing with. You drag those to your favorites right at the top, and you're good to go. Okay, listing uh, deduplication. Um, like I said, this is automated for us. What we want to do is beat any automated prospecting or any other, even third-party products do uh, some things like this. We want to catch it before it even gets to that. You don't want the client to see two listings and then shortly after one disappears and then the other remains or sometimes the price change isn't the same because somebody continues to enter in two systems but doesn't update in two systems. So we know the confusion that causes. Um, I think we've gotten better um, over the course of data sharing, but 
Um, I'll admit, this is a, a common problem with data sharing is the duplication, which is why we had to, we had to automate this process. So I, I hope you'll see the benefit of not seeing those duplicates. It's not 100%, but it will hide, um, I like to say 99.9%. <laughs> Yes. How does it choose which one it hides? Well, I did have the uh, the algorithm, which is part of it right here. We use what are called federal identifiers or FIPS, um, and and then a parcel ID. So really, what it is is identifying what is the property. Do we have the correct or the same property? Check. That's one. And then do we have the same agreement or the same contract on the property? So we have to rely on a couple of things. One could so be. So does it go by the current date? The reason I ask is the expiration quite often date. I see one pending and one active, and which is really frustrating because you don't know which ones. Which yeah. Now, now if the agent, agent. Yeah. Now if the agent says or gives it two different expiration dates, then it's not going to get captured because, as far as the algorithm is concerned, <laughs> it's seen two different listings. No. Okay. It's not the same listing. The contract dates are different now. Well, I'm just wondering the pending from active because pending is a contract on it and it's not closed. Right. Well, and, and that was the example of what I was saying is it's not uncommon for the agent to update one of them <laughs> and then leave the other one. And I don't know if that's on purpose sometimes or if that's just so an accident. So is not going to catch that if they do that? Um, if, it's, if it's the same listing, in other words, it's the same. All the other factors are the same. Yeah, correct. correct. In other words, same county, that's what this is, same parcel ID. And then the same expiration date, that's a duplicate. So if it, takes the same it takes other factors as well. So how does it choose which one it deletes? Uh, oh, it, it doesn't delete, technically. It actually masks, and it's always the listing that is from the data share. So if it's entered in the system, so your um, e-car listings will always override anything that comes from elsewhere. Okay. So then the other one just goes hidden. Yep. So yeah, we always keep the data. It's just that what you don't want is for general, you know, for the agents, the clients, uh, to see those duplicates. Okay, uh, coming soon. I already I went through this cloud CMA, home snap, market stats. And when will they have cloud? Uh, cloud March. Uh, actually, we are pushing for March for cloud CMA. The Home Snap Pro Premium, Market Stats, and List Track. These are actually we're going to try to do all of these, and you'll see the notices. Only because it makes it easier for Colleen when she comes out here and teaches a class that it's good the product's already yes. on, and you just schedule it, and it's accessible by you at at any point. But and you can see we can turn all of this stuff on, and it's like sometimes that's the problem. You don't want to get inundated with all these bells and whistles. Let's and and these are optional things. These aren't things that you need to do. You need to uh, to do your job necessarily, but it helps. And that's the whole point of software. Is it's the whole idea behind this is to make your job easier, not more difficult. So again, they become optional. You decide whether you want to use it. But what we've concluded, especially with Cloud CMA, is when you compare it to the native. ML, or the native uh, CMA program in Paragon, oh, it's it's so much easier. Way easier. And it looks better. It's more intuitive. Yeah. Clients receive it better. It's easier for them to break down and understand. And, yep. and it takes just minutes versus the other one, which took me a lot longer. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, what I hear all the time from agents is, i got to meet a client in 15 minutes. How many times have we heard that one? That's what this is for because you can have one in probably two to three minutes, maybe even faster, and, it, and it's completely integrated within Paragon. So you can find your comparables, and then just throw it right to cloud, generates this beautiful report in just a couple of minutes, and you're good to go. You're I ready. averaged just about six minutes using cloud. It was like 25 using the Paragon CMA, way different. And by the way, every time we release one of these new products, we'll be teaching classes on it. So we're not going to throw it out like some programs were thrown out to you and you needed extra help. Every time we release something, we'll be out here giving you hands-on. We'll help you set up your preferences. We'll help you set up the, you know, the layout of your cloud CMA or, or show you how to use List Track. We'll show you all of those things. So every time something comes out, we're not just tossing it out to you. We'll actually have classes on each and every product. Yes. Yeah, 
so HomeSnap Pro Premium, if you're already on HomeSnap, is it just going to merge into that, or do you have to do extra? It'll be an automatic. You'll probably okay. see an yeah, update, we have know, just to... like a regular update on your phone, um, but all of those things, Brian, will go ahead. Yeah, actually, what's things. happening behind the scenes is we're actually converting your HomeSnap from eCard to my real source, and you'll inherit all of those features. Okay. Which, really, right now you have Pro, which allows you to look up other agents and you get the confidential information like, uh, you know, uh, compensation and so on, and agent instructions or uh, agent remarks. The premium is the maintenance part and the documents. And, you know, so all of those added features that aren't available in any other MLS. So this is an exclusive, what you're getting is something that's exclusive to us. So you are getting that feature, which even other MLS systems um, that use Paragon, and Paragon's the only one that offers that, we're the exclusive for the premium service in the state of Michigan. So any neighboring MLSs that are not on our system, they won't get that feature. So when he says you could do maintenance, literally if you just signed an offer and you're getting in your car and you know you have a bunch of showings on that property, you can immediately mark it pending, you can change the price, you can put it back on the market. So, I mean, these are all things we've wanted to do for a long time as agents. We want to be able to simply mark it pending from our phones. So, so good yep. job, Brian. <laughs> yep. So, so uh, yeah, stay tuned for the notices on those, on those changes when those will be introduced. Cloud is an easy release, market stats is an easy release. This one's taken a little bit more, so I, I would ask that you just stay tuned for the notices because um, part of what we're providing you here, in addition to all this software is, just like Colleen said, education. We're providing classes. We provide, and I'll go through a, a, a quick list of the classes that we provide. We show you how to use them, practice them in, in real world. Instead of just saying, this is what the software does, this is how you use it. This is how you can use it in the real world. This is how you can build your business. This is how you can add clients. All of that. Okay. All right, just a reminder. Um, just like you have today, you have the GLR data um, available. Um, so that data is in, in the new system already, um, in addition to your own. And so it's just a reminder that that data, is, it's, it's already there just like you see it today. Um, okay. Uh, these are the dates, and if you log into uh, the new system, um, you'll see pretty much this right on the page. Now, this is the one, this used to be the red. We're in this period right now, parallel. It means you can log into both systems, but you're continuing to do maintenance in the other system, or in your current eCar Paragon, until this date. Now this is a Thursday. That's this Thursday. So you've got until Wednesday to add or edit any um, listings within your current Paragon. So I would encourage you to write this date down. Um, I've already got a notice in that in the system when you log in the current Paragon saying, hey, update, just remember, this date is coming. So if you're taking a new listing today, put it in as soon as you can, because that 21st date is this week. It's yes. going to transfer over automatically. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what, you know, whatever you get in by that time, anything, everything that you do is going to make it in the other system. As a matter of fact, it's already there. That process is happening. What we need to do is, not only are we converting your data from your this version of Paragon that you use to the new version of Paragon, but we're converting it in the GLR. So all of that data sharing that's happening, we got to change that too. So you don't really need to know the, uh, the details of all of that, just that this is happening Thursday, so no new entry, no listing edits or anything until Monday. So it's important that in this time span, you're not going to be able to enter or edit any listings. So if you could get it in by midnight Wednesday, do so. Um, otherwise, it's going to have to wait until Monday. Or if you have a price change or something that you need to modify in that listing, 
get it done by Wednesday at midnight or wait <coughs> until Monday. And at that point on Monday, you're going to be everything, you're in your new MLS system. So beginning Monday morning at approximately 10 a.m., I didn't put that date down because it's, we always make sure everything is working the way it's supposed to. There are no contingencies. <laughs> and then you'll have uh, ad edit. You'll be able to do just what you do today in your current paragon. You'll be able to enter any new listings, edit any existing listings. And that's where we'll talk about um, how to download and upload your associated documents within this paragon. Um, now, by the way, this, what we, what I'm going through here is actually in this conversion uh, guide, which is accessible on Paragon. We'll put another link and remind you again. I like to say I politely annoy you to the point where you will not forget that these things are happening, these changes, all of that. You're going to get hit with some of these fields. Now, these are probably going to be the most confusing. The compensation. Okay, we understand sub-agent. That's not seller's agent, or I guess in some ways it is. But again, it has to do with on the, uh, the buyer side. Um, the buyer's agent, non-agent. All of that is going to ask you questions like, is there a compensation? Yes, no. How much is the compensation? Is the compensation a percentage, a dollar, or tiered? You don't use tiered, but you'll see that. There's some crazy MLSs or brokers maybe for that matter, that like to use what are called graduated or tiered uh, compensation. Now, unless somebody really, really wants to know what that is, I'm going to just move on. Uh, okay, summer tax year, winter tax year, it's just a disclosure of what, what taxes are being entered. And these really aren't that bad. Um, let me just say I've seen worse and, and conversions, so. so I like what I see. Uh, additional documents, what this refers to is any documents in addition to the disclosure documents. And as always with Paragon, if that little error will jump up at the bottom. Um, and, it, it, and it even augments too. It says, hey, you're, you're not finished yet. There's still some errors down there. If you don't know where that field is, it's okay. If you click modify, it'll take you right there, and it even highlights that field. So if you're not sure, when you get hit with these errors, you can hit modify. Now, the compensation is in a container of its own. So you go in there, and you could, you'll could you see exactly what you have to answer. These, why, why, if you're not going if, if to give any compensation to a non-agent, why do you have to click on it? Uh, it just needs to know whether... You there is any compensation. No. Yes or no? Yep. And so when you go back and you edit a price or something on your listing, don't be surprised if it asks you to fill out something that you didn't see before. Yep. So it really it really is not too bad. You'll you'll see it it might be a little frustrating at first, but then you'll get used to it. Okay, uh, it's important to note showing time. Uh, will be changing on February 25th. So you're going to continue to schedule showings, do everything in your current Paragon, even over the weekend. But come Monday, that access will no longer be available in your current Paragon, and it will be accessible from the new Paragon. And the same goes with Instanet and Transaction Desk. And this we're going to give you a little demo and show you exactly what you're going to have to do, download those documents, and then upload those documents for a listing. Yeah. So how does that affect our app on showing time? Uh, your app should not be affected at all, okay. because uh, what we were able to do is retain the, you know, your logins, you notice they stayed the same. You have the same login in this new system as you do in your current system. Mm -hmm. Showing time uses that to identify you. So. We're able to keep that. Okay. So if you're using the app, and if your schedule, should, that should not be impacted at, a, at all. It's just from within Paragon. Okay, and like I said, we're going to do a, a, a little demo on, on this when we're done with this presentation. 
Um, syndication, IDX, for those agents that have websites or brokers that have websites that have MLS data on it, on it, it will be, we have already notified them to convert. Now, this is always sometimes a process. Um, we've already converted several over uh, last year, but any remaining, you know, if they haven't changed at some point, there might be a little hiccup. There almost always is. I mean, we're talking anywhere around 80 to 100 vendors that do that. Um, no, some are better than others. So if you notice your website, is, it might be a little out of date, just report it. Report it to support. Um, and then we could just move forward or you know, continue to remind them. And that's what we're doing is just reminding them. If they don't do it, then, you know, it's... Okay, uh, user preparation. You know, we're still in that, and that's what we're going to show today is uh, how do we export um, or copy save searches from your current Paragon, and how to import or recreate them in the new Paragon. Now, this I think you already know how to do because you've, there's really no difference between, as far as this is concerned, creating a new save search in your current Paragon compared to the new Paragon. So it's pretty much the same thing. Um, this uh, continue, even after the 25th, continue to use that corrections button. You see a problem, hit that corrections. That's the fastest and most efficient way to notify me, notify Jason, notify the board staff that there's a problem with this listing. There's missing data. There's anything. And please check all of your listings to make sure that they look perfect. So when you go into the new system, make sure everything's there and everything came over just perfectly. And you can do that by going right to your market monitor and hitting my listings. It'll open up all your listings at once and you can just go through them and make sure everything looks good. Yep, and we can show that too. Okay, um, if you haven't logged in or haven't noticed, uh, your contacts are there as of January 28th. So whatever contacts you had entered in to the eCar Paragon, those have moved over as of January 28th. So you don't have to recreate those. Any contacts created after that, yes, you will have to recreate. Okay, exporting saved searches. Um, what we're going to show you, and I'm embarrassed to say there really is no great way for doing this. So what we're going to do is essentially a little hack about copying the information and then saving. Now it's important to note that what we want to enable are the long descriptions. To have just these codes, eh, that doesn't really help too much. You want to see what that value really is. So I'm going to show you how to do that, how to enable it. Black Knight, the vendor, was supposed to enable that for your accounts, but I don't think we were able to get that in time. So I just want to make sure that I or show you how to turn those on, and it's really easy. And then you can copy this information and then paste this into a a text document. Okay, just another reminder about really the concerns that we have. Um, <clears throat> you know, what is what are the three most important things in real estate? Location, location, location. I know that's kind of a <laughs> total cliche, but uh, I can't stress that enough because um, if if it can't be found based on location it might not be found, period. So it's important to note, and I'm just referring to your own listings, just make sure this information is correct. You know, the postal city, the municipality area, school district is correct. Is it correct on the, uh, the map? You know, just ensuring that that information is right means that, okay, that's it. I, based on location, I've covered all bases. These are all bases in regards to location. Okay, I think this is just the... All right. Uh, has anyone not logged in yet? You haven't logged in yet? All right. You, you're very <laughs> honest. All right, that's you're awesome. awesome. You won't let me log in. I'm trying right now. And okay. Won't let me. That, and that's, what, that's part of what this class was, was about. Um, you know, anyone that is just jumping in right now, um, it's not uncommon. So anyone that's having problems, anyone that has more questions, that's 
part of what we're doing here with this class. So I wasn't sure the direction. I thought I'd let you guys, you know, either ask questions or hands-on if you're having issues. We could help you out in this class. <clears throat> I think this is my last slide. And I just want to remind you why we're coming out here. This, this is another big reason that we're coming out here. All of these are classes that we're providing. So in addition to the products, we have more specialized classes like advanced Paragon. Not everybody needs that. You might not ever need to know all of these advanced uh, functions of Paragon to do your job. But for some people, they, they might like the idea of that. Um, we have a CMA class. So it shows you that not only how to use one CMA program, but really how to, how to grab the comparables, just an easier approach in the workflow on how to use the products. Uh, Paragon Connect, uh, Transaction Desk, Athenasign, Public Records with Realist and BSNA. Yes? Do you have hard copies of, of, of like when you do your cloud CMA? you have a hard copy and leave behind that you can take with you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you, you, you can. You should actually. have those. Yep. yep. I actually do an interactive with them, but I always leave them a printed copy behind. Because I have some clients, and some I have some older clients who just want the printed copy, so yep. that's what I use. I think that's that's good. Yep. Okay. Actually, that is one of the things about cloud that makes it nice is the hard copy, the printed version it is very nice. Like that. This one took me about four and a half minutes to do. Um, it's for a current client, but literally you can pull the BSNA record right into there. So I do this so that I can leave a copy behind. Um, but then I also have it saved on my laptop in case I want to blow up the pictures or they say, hey, it does have a finished basement. I can still pull it up and go into even more detail. So. That's important. That's good. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, classes really cover that. Uh, showing time, it really it, it stresses the use of the app. If you're not familiar with the app, we cover more than just using it uh, within Paragon. Um, <clears throat> Lead generation, that's one of our more popular classes. We cover all kinds of products that show you how to, how to uh, you know, gather more leads, clients, uh, through either social media, across the internet, email. All of that is, uh, is, uh, is something that's important for an agent to grow their business. Um, you can see we, we focus on social media classes, mobile agent with HomeSnap. Actually, that includes uh, even, I think, the showing time. Just shows an agent how you can really conduct business on your phone, and then uh, marketing classes that involve uh, market stats. Again, these aren't classes for everyone, but everyone can benefit by them to some degree. So they're nice classes that offer you a um, a real world scenario on how to how to use all these tools that we give you. Okay, if you want to just end that. I did. Say. Usually, I just unplug okay. and plug on back. All right, this is the part that's different from the previous event. So we're going to just show you, just demonstrate on how what's required on uh, copying and saving the saved searches. So I want everyone to understand what's involved there. So before we go into the, that, can I just answer her question? You had a question on how to delete partials, just because mm -hmm. I had pulled it up. So when you're in the new system, here's a list of my partials. Uh -huh. You can actually just click on it, and there's a little delete yep. right up here, and you'll be able to go ahead and delete that, that record. You. And it will ask you, do you want to delete it? Once you confirm, it'll pull it right off there. Now, um, old partials will delete over time. I think it's... 180 or 365 days, I don't know. It's I think it's like, 180, I think. Right? Yeah. So after 180 days, they'll start deleting themselves. So if you have something in there old, you know, I don't know if that's a problem. <laughs> I get one from last April that just okay. went away. Well, that, that, might be the way, that might be the way your system is set up. Ours, after 180 days, it, it will start purging these. <clears throat> or you can delete them yourselves. It's entirely... But I do a lot of training, so it's nice when I can delete them, and you can delete, you know, two or three of them at a time, and so it makes it a little easier. 
Um, and then, oh, the market monitor, we were talking about checking your listings uh, going through this process. So right on your main page, remember your market monitor is right there. You can go to the My Info section. You can go to your listings, simply click on that number that you have there, the amount of listings that you have, and it'll allow you to go through your listings right there so you can see if everything is correct. So open them up, make sure all the information is there, make sure all the location uh, information is there, and you'll be good to go. If not, as Brian said, there's a corrections button on each and every listing right here. All you have to do is click on that correction. It's anonymous, so it'll go to Brian, it'll go to your board, but it'll let us know if something's missing so we can look at it. All right, where would you like to go first? Um, you conduct all All right, any, any other questions before we kind of jump into the, or just raise your hand? Okay. Um, all right, if you bring up a save search, and I think everyone knows how to, if you bring up a save search, you go into your save searches, you bring it up, and you'll see that it populates the criteria summary. Let me start right here. Yep, so what you have is, actually, before we do this, I want to jump into the preferences. Okay. So go under Preferences. If this is not enabled like it's supposed to, go under System. And they can do this right now with their... They, yeah, they could do if that. If you have I yours, we recommend you do this along with us so that when you're going through your uh, criteria, it looks easy so you can transfer it. Yep. You now go under, under Search user. Options. Yep, so we went to Preferences, System. No, no, I, I'm sorry. The old one. Oh, are they doing it in the old one? Yeah, because what we're doing is oh, we need to, that? Yeah, we we need to see the long description names in order to save searches. Leave on in the new one if they do it. In the new uh, that's what I'm enabling right now. You, okay. you didn't even have it. I didn't. No. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing preferences and what system? Yep, system, and then under system you'll see search options. So if you click on search options. Right here, search option. Yep. Okay. Now you'll see this little this area about the middle of the way. You'll see enable lookup long descriptions. Now I hate that this is not. I'm trying to fix this and make it on for everybody because honestly, it should be. I I I don't memorize codes, so I wouldn't expect you to memorize codes. <laughs> codes are not user friendly. That's not the way, you know, I, I've been in this industry for a while, and I remember when you didn't have a choice, the codes were there. You had to punch in the codes. That was primarily, but we're beyond that at this point. So code is for a computer. The long names are for humans, and I'm only talking to humans here. And then they want to go up and save it, correct? Yeah. Okay, what this will enable is, right now, when you put in all the, those areas, you see this, this numeric or alphanumeric code mm -hmm. pop up. Well, that doesn't really help you too much if you don't know what those mean. Well, what we just did allows you to actually now see what those mean. So if you have, like, now Colleen has a, a, a radius. Now, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. But if you have areas... Like go under, under area and just add something in there. It doesn't matter if it if it's in a radius or not. Okay, so you'll see now that the area, and this is in our system, but it'll be like that in the eCar Paragon as well. You'll see what the name of the area is. You'll see what the uh, what the field values are, so whether it's a yes, no, uh, you could see one story, one and a half, two, whatever the architecture style might be. Yeah, the codes is tough. Yeah. Tough yeah, so code. if you don't select that, all you're seeing is codes. So this allows you to, again, I, this is not my favorite way <laughs> to do this, but we really don't have much of a choice. So if you now, if you copy this text, and if you just kind of drag, you can actually paste that into a document. 
Uh, the alternative is you can have both windows open and you can start building safe searches that way. So I just opened a Word doc. If you have notes on your computer, you can do it there. Um, if you have notepad if you're, um, however it's easiest for you, and then just paste it in. And that way, and, and you can even name it. So maybe I want to call this uh, Tom's search criteria. And that way, at least I have what Tom was looking for. There's no perfect way. I wish I could say you could click a button and suck them into the new system. When I had to convert, I had to bring over my contacts and the searches. So I apologize. I know it's not the easiest way. I wish there was an easy button you could click and bring them over. But at least this will give you what Tom was looking for. And again, you can go ahead and name it. And then at least you can, when you're re-entering, you have it in front of you on a safe doc. I, I checked that box and it's still got like transaction type equals B. So, what, what's, so, so, trade, so yeah, business it's a transaction. Yeah. Hey, Colleen, can you go into the e-car system? Mm -hmm. So, like right here, it says equals B. What? No. And I already. You know, okay, no, no, no. But that, but it, that is, system. and that is the value that you have. That is. Yeah, okay. B, B meaning both on oh. transaction type. So okay. that's what that means. So that should, yep. that looks but you see how I'm counting it has Gen C yeah. instead of just 49. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks. Yep. That's a little nicer. Yeah, just to remind you that this current eCar system is still going to be available and accessible uh, for reference only. Uh, it's just, just reminding you, you know, uh, Monday, your new MLS system is is going to be your live system and the old one, your current one, is going to be for reference only. So if you need to go in, you didn't bring over all your safe searches or you left something there and we're moving. We're packing up the truck and we're moving. <laughs> you know what? You forgot something. I left a, you know, a coffee pot in my kitchen. I don't know, whatever. Uh, you have to go back for it, it'll be there. So you do have this grace period that you'll have the other system. And I hate to tell you because I don't want anybody to, but we'll have roughly a month to be able to reference the old system. After that, that's it. And they can find all those dates right in the midsection, correct? Yeah, yes. yeah, if you scroll down. Um, yeah, this is the, actually, there is a notice. Yeah, it came off. Oh, okay, yeah. I can log in again if you want to. Or go into messages, whatever. Yeah, you know what, bring my message. No. That, that's the center right there. Wherever you put it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. This right here. This is what I was, uh, this is what I wanted you to be concerned about, is read only. In other words, in this system, beginning Thursday the 21st, to February 25th, you're not going to be able to enter or add, or uh, um, add or edit any listings. So it's important to get what you need done by Wednesday. Otherwise, it's going to have to wait until Monday to add or edit listings in the new system. How do you get in the new system? How do you get in the new system? Okay, you need to go to. That, you know what? I, is it on your website yet? It's in the messages. It's in the messages. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you didn't see it there, we need to have it added to the site as soon as possible. And I don't care if we call it new MLS or what. No, it's right on the. Is it on the website? Yeah. It's right in the. MLS. Oh, it's in this notice. It's in the MLS yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right there. The last. Uh, the Yep, right message form. Pay message attention form. to the new password or you'll have a problem getting in. Alright. Okay. Yep, That's same login. So if you haven't logged in before. You just put that login page, login site on the same site as the old one and have both of them there. Could you yep, that? that's, yes, that's what I would like to see. Would, think so? Put them both up? Okay. Just. Know the difference, that's all. Evidently, I'm not the only one that hasn't logged in. Yeah, just put them right there. Yep. It was nice of you to say. <laughs> Were you I able to? Know. Got corrected it.
So, so after Monday, how do we get the old system versus the new system? Yeah. You still log in the same way. There's a, to get to the new system, and it's in your messages, but Brian's going to try to put it right on your old system site. This is the new URL to take you there. No, no, that's so if you okay. click right on it, it will take you this to the new URL. What about the old one? You can still access the, that the same way. Just a close period. Is it on the right. right where you're going, correct. But I like your idea of having them all in one so you can just, just put it right there. Nice and easy. You can do both. You can do what you want. You can just do one, 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 one. Oh, parallel access. The one at the bottom. That's it. Thank you. Save Jason's name. Okay. okay. <laughs> Let's go under MLS messages. Oh, gosh. But as I mentioned, one of the things we're really asking you to do, just so we have a nice, smooth uh, transition to go to my listings, just check them over, make sure they look right in the new system, that we will pull the plug, everything is there. It should be, we haven't gotten any calls, but if you see something and want to know about it, I have yeah, we'll, we'll have the uh, the new link on the website as soon as possible. Hopefully today. Maybe I'll talk to Dan or I, I, I actually already called them on it. Did you? Okay. Jason, are you glad we all read that article we put out there? <laughs> <laughs> I just never tried yet. Probably for Mary. I don't care. I put it up there, that would get everybody's attention, too. I'm going to go ahead and log off of here and go into the okay? I'm going to log out of eCar, is that okay? Yeah. So again, there's no perfect way to simply pull them in, but at least you'll have all that criteria so that you can go ahead and re-enter uh, them. And it should be a pretty quick process. It shouldn't take a long time as long as you have saved that into a Word doc or into notes. It'll be a little easier for you. Do you want to go into Associated Docs now? Um, let's make sure anyone... Does anybody need help yeah. doing that? Anyone need help in? logging in? So no, to I'm not sure. sure. I've lost the password one 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 one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. so let's yeah. go yeah. over yeah. where to find it. I try to make it something easy. <laughs> and now it'll force you to change your password. And if your old password or the password that you use in the in the eCar system is eight characters, you can use that same password. So you can have the same login and password. But it needs to be eight characters or more. This is why we do this, do this class. class. It's why we do it because it's you know it's a, it's new you know as an agent for the last twenty years I go to the same place I do it the same way it's hot it yeah. changes hard for us and usually because we have five minutes to head out the door so totally get it. Yep, which is why we got cloud seeding. Okay. <laughs> So to find your saved searches, again, just if you need a refresher, you're going to open up. Let's say I'm trying to find a saved residential search. Right over here, I'm going to go to load save search. I'm going to find the search I'm looking for. Nope. I'm going to click on it. And here's where I'm going to find my criteria. I'm going to copy it. The wizard, yes. And then paste it into a document. No, 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 you're, now you're ask, it's asking uh, for a new password. Oh, okay, okay. So as long, if your old one is at least eight characters, you can just use the same old password. And just like before, you can actually have the browser save it for you, and then you can forget your password. And <laughs> call support, and we'll, we'll get you in one way or the other. Hey, I've actually done that myself. <laughs> So I, I try not to reuse too many passwords, and then I, so, it happens to all of us. But it's nice that it actually saves the password, and you're able to get right in. From a security standpoint, you know, I would always argue against that, but you know what, I do it myself, so I don't really have much of an argument on that. But I do stress changing passwords occasionally. Okay, if I show them the data sheet while they're working on that? Yeah, you can show how to uh, download a data sheet. Or not a, oh, I'll just show the upload yeah. button yeah. while we're doing that. So as Brian was mentioning, one of the things that I love that we did in Instanet that will be new to you is when you're putting listings into Paragon, you know those boxes that you're opening, you're putting in all of those fields of information. So let me kind of show you what it looks like. 
So in Paragon, when you're entering a new listing, when I say I'm entering a new residential condo listing, you're literally going through and you're adding in all of this information. Now, as an agent, I kind of find that a little bit painful. What I do like is in Instanet, you have a data sheet, and we actually made this data sheet kind of like an agent goes through the home, kind of makes sense where everything is. What I like about the data sheet is everything in red is required in order to move your listing over to Paragon. What I really like is, you know those teeny tiny features when you're entering everything into Paragon? Now you'll be able to do those features right on an easy to read data sheet. Once you fill all that in, what you want to do is you simply want to click the upload listing button and what it's going to do is take all that data and send it over to Paragon for you as a partial listing. Way easier. It takes me half the amount of time when I do it from the data sheet. Okay. Okay. I don't know what I've done wrong, but something is alright. Okay. Tell me how I can help. Okay. Here, I, I have not tried this before. So okay. I go to this. Yeah, so you're going to just click right on it. Okay, now you're going to put in your username. And it's putting in my original password. It's, it's um, cash, so if you're going to just go in backspace. Have you logged in at all yet? No. Okay. So do the 111. What it's trying to do is it's using the memory. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Four yeah. Ones. That's what I know it's doing. Did you put four ones in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're, and you've never logged into it before? No. All right, let's see your username. Is that one eight three five two nine? Now your password's got to be. Eight years. Eight years. Well, when you log in originally, you made it one 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 one. I mean, I don't think I have. Yeah, it's almost like it's almost like somebody logged in. Oh, it's a protection. Oh, okay, sorry. You're fine. Kelly, you you want me to reset the password? Could you? That would be great. Will she be able to simply use the 111 again, or will she get a password reset? She'll get a password reset. So you're going to open that person now. going to reset the password for you. And then you're going to that could be, but I don't think so. I, mean, I could have tried and forgot, but that's all I This is why we have these classes, right? We want to make sure everybody can log in, all the data that's right. So we can't get to this in all of that right now. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. You I don't know if you're going to shoot the yeah, and this is the new data uh, sheet. It will, it's really nice. It takes me half a lot of time to enter it this way. If you look at the features in What's it going to say? It should be going to the inbox there. I just, um, is what it be? 9 a.m. email update? No, it would have gone just now for Jason. So no, no, actually. Yeah, it should be Paragon. So go to the inbox. Generally, All right. It, it's been sent. Do me a favor. Go in and log in as me and change my. Just add a one after my current password. <laughs> and that way I have a new password that'll work in both systems. Well, I can, I can do it. I can send you a. Go in. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. it this, this new system won't allow us to actually see your your, your password. All, all we can do is just go in and send, send a reset. That, that, that's, that's all we can do. And so what I do is put it just you'll, you'll, you'll get it in, uh, on an email, and you'll just send a little select the little let's say click here and it'll then prompt you to put put in your a new password.
Can I just, can I just do that by hand once? Uh, as long as they eight, eight digits, yeah. 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 I will send, send that right now. Open up your email and see if it's coming. fill out that field. I now can do that from the data sheet. Again, this will be coming to you. When will they have access to the data sheet, Brian? Um, they should have access to it come Monday. So because Monday? They'll be in our instead. Monday, it'll, it'll be in the My Real Source Library. So you know how you have a bunch of libraries that you can choose forms mm -hmm. from? What you'll want to do is you'll want to go into the My Real Source Library and it's called the residential data condo form. There's one for each class, but the one you're going to want, if you're listing a single family home, you're going to pull open the data sheet. You're going to fill in this information. Again, you can even fill some of this in from tax information at the beginning when you're creating your transaction. Then you're going to go up to the top. You're going to click upload listing. And basically what it's going to do is just what you said. It's going to move everything over to Paragon, but now it lets you put your photos in first. 
Why it's so important now to add your photos in first is because I have to tell you, I was guilty of this. I would get all excited about my new listing. I'd go in, I'd put it in, I'd hit save. Five minutes later, I'd add in my photos, I'd edit them. So I thought in another 15 minutes they would show up on Zillow or Realtor.com or some of these others. But what actually happens is because photos are so large, a lot of times those photos don't actually make it onto your listing for a full 24 hours. So your seller's looking every five minutes wondering, why is there no photos? Why is there no photos? So you want to make sure when you click that upload listing button, what it's doing is it's actually making a partial in Paragon. You want to go in now and you want to add the photos. Once you add your photos and your associated docs, you're going to hit save. And then it's going to make that listing live with all the information. Also, if your clients are using the Collab Center, when those notifications go out, they go out right away. So you want to make sure you've got your photo in so when that buyer gets that, hey, there's a new listing, that photo is the first thing that they see. Okay? <laughs> Did you want me to go into uh, uh, exporting and importing? I do. So I do yeah. Okay. Exporting us and downloading from the transaction. Yeah. All right. So one of the significant changes that you're going to see is that you're going to actually add your seller's disclosures and lead-based paints right into Paragon itself. So now everything's kind of housed in your Instanet. The reason that we want you to add it right into Paragon is because I promise you it's going to give you some good benefit. When you're actually walking into a listing and the disclosures pop up on your phone, it's because we can pull those from Paragon. So uh, I was showing houses last weekend, and as I mentioned, a buyer said, well, how old is the roof? Well, normally I wouldn't know that. But now I can grab my phone, and when I enter the listing, it's going to show me the disclosures for that property. The reason we can do that is because it actually pulls them from Paragon. So when you have your disclosures in Instanet, I'm going to start there. So I'm going to say that I've got my seller's disclosure here and the lead-based paint document. First, you have to get it out of Instanet because now we want to put it into Paragon. So when you're looking at your seller's disclosure statement that your client has filled out, there's a little button here that says Download. So if you click on your seller's disclosures that your clients have filled out, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but Instanet actually has a way that you can send out seller's disclosures via email and your clients can actually fill them out that way. So I don't know if you're using oh, wow. that. Ooh. I love it. Uh, before, matter of fact, what I do is I, uh, 24 hours before my listing appointment, I will call them and confirm my listing appointment time and I'll let them know that the seller's disclosure documents are going to be coming to them. What I tell them is this tells me about the condition of your home, and then all you have to do is open up your email. It's fillable, so they can fill out the fields, they can check things off. All they do is hit save, and they're returned to you as the agent. And I love that because before I go on the listing appointment, if they filled out, yes, we had a lot of water in the basement, when I get there and I'm now visually inspecting the home, I know what I'm looking for. And so by taking just a few minutes before I go to the listing appointment and reviewing their seller's disclosure, I find it really helpful. If they put something on the seller's disclosure and I get there and I say, you know, really I wouldn't call that water or, or we have that kind of discussion, I can always send them out the link and they can even uh, change something that they had on their seller's disclosure. Maybe we wanted more clarity, something along that line. So keep in mind, really what you're doing is you're going into the transaction and you're simply downloading the uh, seller's disclosure and lead-based paints. I'm going to go ahead and so click So did you okay. send that, what did you send that from? Uh, you can send it right from within, I'll show you. So when you click on the seller's disclosure document, you're going to send it via email. So here's one that my client actually did fill out from his email. When you're looking at your seller's disclosure, you're going to go to File and Send, and you're going to send it via email. And in this case, I, I would only do this, by the way, with my seller's disclosure or my lead-based paint document. Everything else I want to prepare myself. But in this case, I'm going to send it to the recipient, my seller, with their email. I'm going to send it as a link. The only difference is you're going to check this one box. This allows you to send the seller's disclosure in an editable format where they can go in and fill out those lines, check off those boxes. Now, the nice thing is when they get it, 
um, they are able to just hit save or print. So they can print a copy for themselves. <coughs> if they hit save, within about three minutes' time, it's returned to you via email, and it also puts it right back in your transaction. So when you're ready to print all your documents for your appointment, everything is there. Now, just to remind, this is something that we teach in the <coughs> class, and uh, I would encourage you to attend the uh, transaction desk, Instanet, and Athenasign classes. Uh, when they're available. Um, however, this is obviously not necessary at this point because really what I need you to do is go into your transactions and just download them. Because we need to upload these into Paragon. So it's important to note that um, when you go into your transaction, and this is the part I'm not really clear. Now, you, your, your disclosure document should be in here for your properties, correct? Are they right under transaction desk? Yes. Okay. They're, they're, Not necessarily. They have to drag them, <laughs> have to drag them under documents because they're filled out when they're written in. They're already right. past I'm, that point. I'm old fashioned. When I go on a listing, I have all the documents. So I'm usually there before I, I'm, I have an advance visit to view the home. I leave the documents, I explain them, and then when I come back to do the listing, Okay. So you're but a two-stepper. You're a okay. two-stepper. And, and that's fine. It's just what I'm trying to do is I want to make sure the digital form of the document, wherever it's stored in, in Instanet, in you're able documents. to... I checked it. Oh, okay. Documents. You're able to download those either to your desktop, I don't care, or even if you send it to your an email address. I just need you to be able to get that out of there so that you can upload it into Paragon. We're going to show you how and where you would upload that in listing maintenance because this is something come Monday you're going to need to do because those documents aren't going to be um, available. So you're going to go into your transaction like I showed you the document that your seller filled out will be here you're going to go up to that little download again you're going to click on that and what I would do is I'd save it to your desktop just to make it easier you're going to choose the location and hit save then when you're going into the listing, now you want to pull them into your new listing. So I'm going to grab. You might have to grab the I think I've got one right here. Here he is. So now once you've got them saved to your desktop, Now I want to go to where it says add and edit documents. I want to click add new. I want to browse my computer to find my desktop. So again, what's going on there? This was Those another house. <laughs> this was a yeah, he sent me some pictures. He put new carpeting in, but he sent them from his iPhone. So they weren't really that helpful. I had to go back and take new pictures. So now I want to go in, I want to find my disclosures that I just saved to my desktop. Lowercase J. And I want to pull them in. I want to call them Lowercase. Uh, seller's disclosure. And lead base paint. And I want to go ahead and save it. So again, really all you're doing is downloading it from uh, Instanet, so you're saving it. I'd save it to your desktop so it's nice and easy. And then you're going into your listing, clicking Add Edit Documents, Add New, and then finding it wherever you've saved it and pulling it. It's not hard, but this will allow you to do a yeah. lot more with it. Now, um, I think Instanet did have this capability that whether you can make it public or not. Um, let's say, for instance, it's a document that you really don't want to share but it's associated with it. Now, you can still keep them right within pair or within uh, Instanet or a transaction desk. That's fine. Um, I just want you to be aware of that, you know, this by default means it's public. In other words, any agent is going to be able to see it. Agent. Um, so, it's important to note, you don't even have to change that. It's just that that capability is there. I don't think you use it. I think most of it... Your personal property sheet to it. With your personal property sheets. Yeah, you got to you got to download the, that, and so it transfers over. In, in your seller's disclosure sheet. No. Oh, your no, personal, personal property. property. I don't like know the stove and refrigerator and, and that stuff. Oh, oh see, we so. don't have a we now where where I'm from. So this is a little bit different. Where I'm from, we actually add that right onto the listing disclosure. We don't have a special sheet. So can you tell me a little bit more about your sheet? Bill of sale. It's, it's an addendum. It's like a bill. Yeah, it's an addendum. So you add. 
Okay. You know, so the room where stuff. the lead face paint is, the yeah. seller's disclosure is one of them. Okay, that's so out. that is something that you publicly disclose with the property. Yes. Okay, then that's another document that you would have to add in this, this way. So anything we've got so, in the back box we want to take okay. out and say. Well, again, disclosures, lead-based paint, and then now this. It sounds like that needs to be added here as well. So you need to download all of those and then upload it. So anything that is public or associated with the... In other, in other words, anything that the buyer's agent is going to need you need to put in here. Bank addendums are another good example. If they have to fill out a hold harmless bank addendum and that's something you know that other agent's going to need to turn in, that's another sheet that you would want to add here. And I would I like to label them separately because it's a little easier for the agent if they're just looking for a particular form. So. And remember, what the advantage to this is when you go into HomeSnap, those documents will be available. Show you that right with me, Brian. No maintenance. Oh, no maintenance. Remember, no maintenance until Monday. Yeah. Yep. And you know what? The reason we do that is during parallel, I, we can only have one place to edit a listing. If I gave you two, then what you get is it creates a what's that? Yeah. Or a data paradox, or whatever you want to call it, but. Yeah, if you start editing uh, a record in multiple locations, that really does cause a mess, huge mess. Um, so this is why. So that's why we shut one off, and then we uh, we reconcile. We make sure nothing's missing, and that's what we're doing over that uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thing is where it's supposed to be, and then Monday you'll be able to edit those listings or edit. Or add listing. No, yes. from the old Paragon, what about all of the docs that are currently, current listings that we've got, because not all of our agents in our office do our input our own listings, so are those doc box documents going to automatically come over, or do our secretaries need to know that that stuff has to be done? You mean the associated documents? My current, you know, current listings that I've got right now, and right. I've got all my disclosures in my doc box. Am I going to have to go in and do that, or are the still, secretaries going here's, to have to? Here's where it'll be disconnected. Um, they'll still be in your doc box, mm -hmm. uh, but they won't be associated with the listing anymore in this system. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So are the secretaries that, like, if Katrina yes. does that, does Katrina know that she's got to take all of those things from the doc box now and put them in for the new system? She's going to have, have to know, yes. Yeah, she, if, if you have somebody, in other words, the agents don't deal with any of that, then an admin, unfortunately, is going to be tasked with that effort, and they'll have to go into Instanet and the DocBox and download all of those documents that are associated with each one of those listings and do just this. Or go through every listing that we currently have and upload them into the new list. Correct. Um, yes. yes. Uh, and and the, if your documents, if your documents were in here in the first place, this would have been a non-issue. The, the documents would have come over, and you wouldn't have noticed the difference. But because they're in Instanet, a non-standard way of holding those documents, it limits what we can do. Uh, we don't have access to them. This is the same thing that's happening with other large MLSs: is we're limited on how we can get their documents. They're not able to see their documents in, in HomeSnap. They're not able to share the documents the way we would normally do it. And what so, is the deadline for that, just to Thursday. let them know? Well, uh, really, they can't do anything until Monday. Okay. And, and that's what you're going to have is next week is going to be Busy. sort of, let's call it clean up, catch up. In other words, we're on this new system. Now we need to reassociate these documents with the listings. But they have to have them pulled by Thursday, right? Or can we still be able to pull them off? Um, no, no, no. You'll, you'll have access to them on Monday. So I would encourage, there's nothing you can do until Monday. 
No, but you could no time limit. I yeah. think is what they're they're yeah. saying. You're still going to have Instanet. We're move, Instanet will still work the exact same way. You'll just have some new enhancements. So as of Monday, he's saying you can go in, but it's not like if you don't do it in one week, you're going to be penalized or they're going to fall off or anything like that. You'll have time, and the receptionist will have time to actually add those documents. You just won't have all the benefits in HomeSnap until they're there. So you can sense. still pull the documents off the old yes. the old Paragon on Monday. Because you're pulling them from, in, you're actually pulling them from Instanet. No, so because it's Instanet. That's right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because so Instanet right. is moving. No, uh, the documents will only be available to the listing agent and the admins, and, and it won't be available to the rest of the MLS until so they upload it. But it's not like you only have three days and it's going to cut okay, the right out. Yeah, yeah. I think she was thinking kind of like yeah. the listings that's just going to go away. So no, no. we won't want to do it until it, the cut over, but then there's yeah. no rush. Just know you won't have the added and people won't be able to see them and so that you add them. So you want to do it sooner than later, but it's not like if you don't get them done in 48 hours, you're going to have a problem. So the, you, you ask why we didn't introduce all of these other products. This is why, because in the past when it was just an MLS system that we're moving from one place, to another, that's enough to deal with. But now we're dealing with an MLS system, data sharing, Instanet, showing time, and now we have to kind of coordinate all of this stuff over to the other system. So to add even more to it would really be a burden to to everyone, yourself included. So um, it's a lot of work involved, but um, like I said, and I could go back to this slide, there's a lot of benefit here. Um, I understand the heartache and the pain that we're going to be going through here, but um, it really, um, it really is the future of your MLS. It's a benefit for all of the members. So I, I just hope everyone keeps an open mind for what you know, what little uh, you know uh, tasks that you're going to have to deal with here. The benefits that you'll reap at the uh, at the other end are are definitely going to outweigh those inconveniences. And uh, again, I, I totally sympathize. I've been through several of these conversions, and they are um, on a good day. They're <laughs> they're not great, but that's they are what they are. But we've gotten good at this, and I, I hope that that helps this whole process. Poor Jason. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, hey, you know, we're here, I mean, we're part of this too. I, you know, uh, we're a partnership. So, um, so we kind of augment Jason too. So if uh, Jason gets a call or if he can't, you know, answer that or if he's not here, we answer it or whatever. I, you know, we, we are part of support as well. So, um, so when we come in, we don't just drop all of this in your lap and then walk away. Um, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's in our interest to, to make sure that you succeed too. So well, Some of it we do. Some of it we do. But you got to make it go smooth because they have realists. They can see where you live. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I know. I don't go by an alias. Right? I probably should after this one. <laughs> uh, any other questions? I, wait, was there something else I was supposed to... We were doing uh, download, upload, we were doing... Um, okay, we did the save searches. We did the save searches, we did the copy and paste into the doc. Is there any questions you have that we're, we're here and we've come all this way? Yes. I had, um, like, where, how I want my results. I had what fields and, you know, all of that that I'm going to probably have to recreate right now. Yes, in the spreadsheet. You can do that today. That's what I yes. Do. I don't want, yeah. I don't want to take the time to do it. And then you really, you could do everything except add and edit listings, and obviously you don't have access to Instanet um, and showing time just yet. So what I encourage you to do is, in this time frame, is just prepare. Let's make sure your contacts are up to date. Make sure your safe searches are in there, so that Monday you're ready to update or change any listings, yes. I just have one question to reiterate with Colleen. So I do not put my new listings in. So I put my pictures in in a partial and then it goes to staff? Great. That's a great question. If you want, you can do that. What I do is I fill out the data sheet mm -hmm. 
and then I click the button and I let my front desk know that it's there. If you wanted to add your photos before you, you can absolutely you can click the button, send it as a partial, add in your photos, and then you can let your front desk know that all the information is there. The reason I do that is um, I turned in a $47,000 piece of vacant land to my front desk. It went in at $470,000 because, you know, they're answering the phone, they're helping people. So I would rather use my data sheet to push it over because our brokerage policy is that the staff has to review it before it goes live. So I would rather be able to have all the information there, add my photos, and then push it to the staff. The only thing is you do have to let your staff know. Mm -hmm. Your staff have the ability to go in and approve all of the uh, listings and make them live, but you do have to let them know it's there. It's not automated where it like, emails them. So you do have to let them know. Yes. Uh, this is on a different thing. You have uh, vacant land, you got commercial, and residential and what have you site uh, auctions properties for auctions I'd like to see a, a separate site for auctions I hate to do my searches and then find out it's an auction and I just I would like to see all the auctions go into one site and then if you want to deal with property and auctions now I know that's going to make brokers mad but too bad <laughs> well I you know I I, I can't answer too much on that other than um, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, it, it's a property that um, statistically does not come on the market and does not have a lifespan like a standard listing. Right. So should it be counted statistically? Should it be counted as a comparable? You know, those, those are great questions. They really are. And that's something uh, that could be debated uh, with your leadership and they could decide whether you would have a policy or a place for uh, you know auction properties. And just to, so Jen, I, you may I already totally know this, you can actually go in and say must not see auction homes under financial yeah. terms, and yeah. it would take all of those out. Oh, there you, you go. Learn now. Um, right under features, and I, I wasn't sure if you were aware of this, because I like Brian, if you decide and your leadership says, you know what, we can make a separate class for those, that's one thing, but I was having that problem as well. If you go, if you're running a search and you say, I absolutely don't want to see any auction homes in my results, because I'm that way, I don't want to see auction homes, I want to must not have under auction, and any of my results will exclude the under auction features. homes. Correct, right under features when you're doing your search. So let me show you how I got there. Um, I went to features, right here. I went to the magnifying glass to the right. And you can, you can actually even save that and, and do a, a search that way. But if you go to financial terms, this is where you can say it must be, let's say you were just looking for a land contract. I could say must have land contract or must not be. So must not be an auction, and then I won't see any of those so that's auction under policies. financial terms. Correct. Under that yep, under or, 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 or you could just go to the, you could just the, go the to new features. system. I'm yeah, sorry. that's underneath the, the, the new system. Yeah, I understand. system. I understand. Okay. Okay. That's just for me, but that's yeah. great. No, or you could just go helps. under must not have and just type auction. That's that okay. Right I need. Good, I, need. I love that. That's why we come out. We want to, you know, That's give... good. So you got so many little hidden secrets here, it's not funny. It, well, that's what I found is he hides all the good stuff. He hides all the good Those stuff. Those are new advantages to the new system they, that I didn't see. Uh, they're the perks. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we doing with safe searches? So safe searches, you want it, uh, let me go back to it. So I'm going to open up a, I'm going to go to my search. I'm going to open up a saved search that I have. So I'm going to go well, to. Well, they don't go from the old one to the new one, the saved ones, right? Nope, you've no. got to actually Now this is the manual process of copy, paste, and then re-enter. Or have them, you can have both windows open and pull up a safe search and then enter it in the new system. But. Unfortunately, there is just no easy way to do this. this so I'm is opening, opening a safe search. Um, the easiest way I found was to put a laptop next to a desktop and have the e one and the other. There you go. Just that would be perfect. If you, yeah, if you have that, that capability, an extra screen. Actually, cool. even just a plug-in monitor, you could split the, the display. But the best, way, savvy to, the to, best do way to do it, if you don't have that system, is again, you're just going to copy the criteria. And then what I did is I just pasted it right into a Word doc and I named it Tom Search. So I know if that's what Tom was looking for and I can recreate it. Oh, because you're going to hand that or no. Okay, Correct. I got that. I didn't realize that's what we were Yep. Yep. Yes, it, it, there is nothing automatic about this process There's at all. Sure. 
So I'm, I'm here. I went to this little criteria summary box and I'm going to copy the information and then I'm going to click the copy and then I'm going to go into my Word doc and I'll paste it at the bottom. So just a drag, right click, copy, paste. And then I put a little name right above the top, like let me, we want to call this Tom Search. <coughs> And then I would do the same thing with Sally's. And the idea is you'll have them in a place that you can now go to this document and now enter it right from here. So, so at least you have it. it, from there and put it in the new or no? No. No, no. And then, yeah, and then manually it. enter it yeah. based on those notes. Again, I, I think it was already it was just suggested uh, a split screen that would with be one perfect. and the other. Uh, like I said, uh, if you don't get it, there is no deadline other than just knowing that the old system is no longer going to get updates <laughs> beginning, you know, uh, actually this Wednesday, but Monday for sure is, is the deadline. Um, you could still go in the system, it's just not going to get any more updates. So you'll continue to get updates in the, the new MLS system throughout the weekend. And you will in the other one, it's just there won't be any eCar updates. So, I, again, I, I, you know, if you have anybody that's critical, any buyers that are critical, um, I would get those over now. And then you can always, if you got somebody that, um, that is not so hot, uh, you can go back even later next week or, or later and, and move those over. So I would obviously just address the critical ones first and, and you know, set them up. Start having them um, send the uh, either the client connect or the email and disable the other one in the current MLS system. And just start doing that. Just go down the list and again, it's 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 not it's it's not the best, but it it's all we got as far as converting that. It's a one-time pain, but I promise you, when you see some of the new benefits, it will be worth it. I know it doesn't feel like that when you have to re-enter it. <laughs> so did I answer yeah. your question? Did you get the whole, the staff? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? And you know how to filter out auctions. So see, it was worth you coming, right? Oh, that was good. <laughs> I love that. I love the pleasure. Look at that. If I need to, I'll call Yes. <laughs> well, any time. 24 hours, 24 hours, 7, you can call oh, me up. Great question. Okay. okay. Great Here's, question. That number, Here's how you, you customize it. If the fields that are here by default are not the fields that you want, or you want to reorder them or <coughs> move them, just like in your current system, you can go in and you can... But if it's in secondary, the big trick is just change this to secondary, pull it out, then change it to primary and pull it in. So you just have to change, you just have to pull it out and then it will show up in available. So if you have something in secondary and you now want to put it in primary, just go to your secondary yep. so you see it, check it off, hit remove, then check it off and put it into your primary. Okay. So if you've got uh, carts, do you just lose that info on your listing carts or do you need to recreate them or Correct. Do you transfer over? Yep, no list, uh, listing carts do not come over either. Okay, so we just start over. Correct. Now can we start over with our searches? Well, your saved searches, this is the part that you have to do manually. Well, so can I start over in the new system? Absolutely. Okay. That, that's the idea. Then you, you, you got the views, so Yep, you just got to grab your your search criteria and just start plugging it in the new system. And that's, Any that's other the questions? Trick. Good questions. And then we can just redo a listing card and save it. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Great job. Thank you. Simple. And also a big hand for Jason. Yeah. 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 Remember that we have support. All the numbers are located there. If you forget the dates, Brian put the dates in those pop-up messages, so you'll see them as you go forward. But don't, uh, you know, if you have a question, don't hesitate to reach out. That's what we want. And check your listings over. That's your big homework. Make sure they all look good yep. in the new system. Yep. Report any issues on the data. Can't stress that enough. All right. Good. All right. Have a great day. Sell, sell, sell.
Thank you. Thank you. I guess what, what worries me, Diane? Yes. Got to end with a cell phone. I know. You know. <laughs> That's the. <laughs>